Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Franziska Bonat. I'm uh, the host of today's bite size talk, talk. And with me are Sarah Monson and Sarai Varona from the Institute of Health Carlos III. And they are talking today about the NFCO pipeline viral recon updates and use cases. And uh, up to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we are really glad to be here today to talk about NFCore uh, Viral Recon. This is the second talk uh, regarding this uh, pipeline, the first one as a bite site, I think. Uh, so we want to talk about uh, some updates and some new functionality we've added to the pipeline in the last uh, year and a half, I think. And also we want to speak about some use cases uh, we've uh, used in, in our lab, uh, using viral recon as the uh, main character. Uh, we're going to start with, uh, with a brief uh, roadmap, uh, development map, uh, and followed by the major functionalities in, in the last releases. Uh, and the, as use cases, we're going to talk about the Relic of, ne Relic of Network, which is the genomic surveillance network uh, for SARS-CoV-2 in Spain, where we use viral recon for uh, data analysis. We're going to talk about uh, a paper we participated uh, regarding an, an study of a long-term uh, COVID patient. And also we're going to speak a little bit about the work we are uh, currently doing, uh, studying the multi-country monkeypox uh, outbreak in ISTE, where we are also using viral recon. As a roadmap, this pipeline uh, was first uh, um, started, the first release uh, was in, in June 2020, but we started the development in, in March, more or less. A um, uh, second uh, major release was in a year later, in, in in May 2021, where all the pipeline was rewritten using the LS2 implementation, and also a new whole branch of the pipeline was uh, added for nanopore uh, data analysis. Also, pangolin and Splate was uh, included for lineage assignment uh, for SARS-CoV-2. Uh, just uh, a few months ago, in February, with uh, a, a new release, the 2.3, including some uh, fix of regarding problems or decision taking from uh, IBAR consensus was uh, added. And we're going to talk about this functionality uh, deeper in the next slide. Uh, currently, we are in the in the version 2.4.1. And this is the major <coughs> functionality we've uh, added. As I just uh, told, uh, the nanopore branch of the pipeline um, uh, allows us to handle both uh, Illumina reads and nanopore reads using uh, viral recon. And for nanopore data, Arctic Network um, uh, pipeline is uh, used. Uh, a variant calling and consensus genome output is generated, and also next plate and pangolin. Uh, for lineage assignment is uh, computed uh, over this uh, consensus genome. One of the main functionality in the version 2. Point, uh, added in the version 2.3 is that now we, uh, the user can determine which variant color, which combination of variant color or consensus generation software wants to, to use. Until this uh, version, by default, IVAR variants uh, always use IVAR consensus as the software for generating the, the consensus, but now you can combine them. You can use IVAR variants and, um, for variant color, uh, variant calling and BCF tool consensus or the other uh, way around, providing more flexibility for the for the user and also a more capacity of decision of how the consensus will be generated. This is one of the main uh, functionality, and this is important because changes uh, changes the, the the output or the way the consensus is generated from previous uh, versions. Uh, now the default is to use uh, IVAR variants as the variant uh, uh, as the variant color and BCF tool consensus as the consensus generated. We've uh, taken this uh, decision due to some. Um, some behavior of IVAR that may not be uh, the desired one for this case, and some known issues of IVAR consensus that are not yet uh, addressed uh, by the software. 
For example, here we see that the uh, IVAR uh, includes low frequency deletions. Uh, when we use uh, viral recon, we select a threshold for uh, including variants in the consensus. For example, the default parameter is that we include variants in consensus that meet the criteria of more than 0 0.75 um, allele frequency. In this case, we see that even if we use this criteria uh, in viral recon, we see that this election, which is 0 0.43 of uh, allele <laughs> frequency, um, is in, the election is included in the in the consensus where the uh, reference should be included. Here we can see uh, the reference, uh, the consensus generated by BCF tools, and the consensus generated by IVAR. By IVAR, IVAR is included a low frequency election that shouldn't be there if you don't want to. Um, also, a non issue about uh, IVAR is that uh, it has some uh, issues regarding the calculation of default coverage of uh, insertions and, and, and deletions. Here we can see that this is a, a low frequency um, deletion at, um, as the previous example. Uh, again, the reference, the VCF tools consensus and the IVAR consensus. And here we see the deletion, the low frequency deletion, but an, uh, an N and a mask uh, position is added even if we have enough coverage in this uh, area. So this is an, an issue about the, the depth of coverage calculation that is uh, fixed uh, using BCF tools consensus instead of either. Another uh, issue uh, why we uh, selected BCF tool consensus is that IVAR, this is not an error of IVAR consensus, it's is just the, the criteria or the, the behavior that IVAR has to, to create the, the consensus and that may be uh, the, the, the behavior the user wants. That's uh, the main difference between BCF tools consensus or IVAR. If you want to include variants uh, that are, if you want to include variants um, regarding intra-host variability in your consensus, uh, for example, in this case, we have uh, two positions here that uh, IVAR includes and B-Wolf nucleotides. This is because in this position, in order to be in the, criteri the criteria of 0 0.75, uh, you have uh, IVAR needs to add two nucleotides in this position. That's because we add the, the, um, the ambiguous uh, nucleotide. In this case, if we only want to add the majority or the or the more represented uh, nucleotide, in this case is A or uh, G, this is the only two nucleotides that meet the criteria of more than 0 0.75. So it depends if you want to add all the information of intra-host variability in your consensus or you don't want to may include this noise in your consensus. IVAR includes the ambiguous uh, nucleotides because it uh, includes majority, um, uh, the behavior is to include majority uh, alleles uh, until you meet a uh, certain criteria. And BCF tool consensus only includes variants that are more than uh, an allele frequency. And another uh, issue is just an, another example of the previous uh, one. This is also a election in low frequency uh, variants. And we see that uh, IVAR is including uh, ENDS, a masking uh, sequence that could, um, could make problems uh, when you upload to G8, for example, uh, instead of including uh, the reference or the election, but this is a well uh, uh, is an area with well uh, well covered uh, with depth of coverage, but uh, IVAR is only including ends instead of the nucleotides or the election. Another functionality we've uh, added uh, in this case, we are going to talk about two new functionalities regarding the script IVAR TCF, um, the, the script that converts the IVAR output to BCF format. Uh, there we can we added two new functionalities uh, regarding codon merging and strand bias. In the case of codon merging, we mean that uh, when the um, when the B the variant of concerns B117 appeared a uh, new complex variants um, appeared as uh, variants for SARS-CoV-2. And we realized that uh, for these complex variants that uh, changes 
the three nucleotides in a codon, the variant colors, Ivar and all the variant colors reported the variants, uh, the variant are three lines, there's three different changes. This is a problem because you don't have the correct annotation. This is a, a three changes that can, that change the, the codon entirely. So the, the amino acid is changed uh, completely. If you have it in three lines, the annotation couldn't be correct, not for IVAR, not for a SNPF. So we've uh, created a, a function that uh, goes um, position by for, uh, position uh, reading the TCF file from IVAR and we check if they are consecutive and if we found two or three positions that are uh, consecutive we check if they belong to the same codon if they belong to the same codon like this case we see that the red codon is exactly the same for the three positions we collapse these three lines in just one so the red has the three alleles and the alt has the three alleles this um, makes that snippet it uh, creates, uh, annotates the, 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 the amino acid change uh, correctly, fixing this uh, issue. And this is included in the, in the IVAR uh, variance uh, script. And another one is, as we all know, and yes, that are prone for certain uh, bias, uh, as uh, strand bias is one of them. Here we found a strand bias, uh, for example, we, when we have uh, a variant that is only supported for forward or reverse um, strand reads. And this is, is normally uh, making that, uh, that is more probable that that variant is a false positive. A strand bias is, uh, is usually corrected or annotated by most of the variant colors that this is nowadays, but IVAR still uh, lacks this functionality. So we've added this, um, this annotation uh, in the, in the IVAR uh, output conversion to BCF. What we do is to create a contingency table regarding the forward and reverse uh, strand uh, reads for the reference alternate and the red uh, alleles. We, create, uh, we calculate a PSR exact test and we mark as uh, a strand bias um, position when the p-value is less than uh, 0 0.05. This uh, formula is obtained from the tutorial uh, from GATK. And finally, a new uh, output for reporting variant is included also in the version uh, 2.3, uh, where is really useful because we combine the data from the variant calling, the notation, and also the um, the lineage assignment, and uh, this provides uh, um, uh, a good uh, way to, to study, for example, metagenomics uh, uh, data from uh, CWIT, uh, SARS-CoV-2 data. It is really useful for variant inspection, for uh, studying co-infections, uh, etc. And now Sarai is going to talk to you about the use cases. Yes, now I'm going to explain you three uh, use cases of viral recon here in the Institute of Health, Carlos III. The first one uh, is the Relic of uh, Network, which is uh, founded by the ERA Incubator Program and is a, a Spanish network that aims to create a SARS-CoV-2 surveillance at national level based on a genomic sequencing. In this network, the microbiology labs from hospitals are going to select the samples to be sequenced based uh, on criteria established by public health authorities, and they are going to sequence uh, those samples. Then they will send uh, the FASTQ files to the relic of platform here in the EST, and we are going to analyze those samples with viral recon. So we are going to be able to see the national evolution of the viral variants and viral lineage. And also we are going to share uh, genomic data with databases such as uh, GSIDE or ENA. Also, the idea is that uh, we will give uh, support and uh, formation to the different labs that are inside the Relic of Network. As you can see in this schema, there is at least uh, one group in each of the autonomous communities in Spain that uh, um, included in the network. So uh, all together, we are going to uh, create a national surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 and probably probably learn for this uh, approach to extend it to uh, other pathogens. 
This would be a general schema on how uh, the samples are sequenced and analyzed here in the Institute of Health, Carlos III. Uh, after uh, two days of sequencing samples, they are, go they are going to be stored in a um, hard disk cabin and processed in a high, uh, computing, high processing computing uh, server here in the Institute of Health using a viral recon. And then the results are going to be uh, retrieved to the microbiology labs. The second example is uh, about an uh, immunodepressed woman that uh, had prolonged viral uh, replication. So she was receiving immunochemotherapy and after uh, the last uh, cycle of immunochemotherapy, six months uh, after she was uh, admitted in the hospital of being positive for uh, SARS-CoV-2 RT-PCR. After nine months of uh, being uh, discharged and readmitted in the hospital, being RT-PCR positive for SARS-CoV-2 uh, and receiving antiviral drugs and convalescent plasma, uh, the woman died. What we saw, uh, after 237 days of collecting 12 samples for sequencing is that uh, the last uh, sample obtained had accumulated 29 nucleotide mutations and 22 amino acid mutations using a uh, viral record uh, in the mapping approach uh, with the Wuhan uh, reference genome. Uh, for this, uh, we use viral reconversion 1.2 uh, in development uh, version. Something interesting is that uh, we use the long variant table that Sarah explained you to create uh, these uh, plots where we selected uh, the low frequency variants uh, to see uh, how uh, they were uh, changing over time in, in this patient. We have in the X axis the date of sample collection and in the Y axis, the alert frequency. And each line and dot represents one variant uh, in, the, in the sample. When no dot is shown, is that that uh, position didn't have enough coverage in the, in the sample. So uh, in this example, we can see the ORF1AB mutations that we can see that they are uh, most of them are present in the non-structural protein 3. Something similar happens with the S gene, where most of the variants are accumulated in the spike protein S1. Also, we found one of the variants that was afterwards considered as a mutation of concern of the Delta variant inside uh, this woman when mm, the Delta variant wasn't circulating in Spain. Something interesting we found selecting these low frequency variants is that we saw patterns of uh, different uh, viral subpopulations uh, competing uh, inside the intrahost. So uh, we think that there was a intrahost mutation and competition between the viral uh, subpopulation and also that the, those antiviral drugs uh, were selecting uh, resistant uh, viruses. And last example is the most recent one, and is how we uh, in the Institute of Health Carlos III treated the multi-country monkeypox outbreak in uh, non-endemic countries. So uh, here we uh, sequenced 28 samples, and uh, we use viral recon latest version to obtain uh, different uh, FASTAC uh, genomes for both the novo assembly and mapping approach against different uh, three different uh, monkeypox uh, genomes. We obtain uh, using uh, an Illumina Novasec of two for 150 grids, uh, 33. Uh, samples that had uh, the hundred percent of the reference genome cover at least a tenfold of uh, depth. We used the uh, mapping consensus FASTA files and the de novo assembly FASTA files to create multiple sequence alignments and see the performance of both approaches. We saw that the uh, ends uh, of the reference genome 
couldn't be uh, assembled with the, the novel assembly approach, but with the uh, mapping approach, we could see that there was enough uh, coverage to uh, obtain those sequences. Also, in the plasmid ID plots obtained with viral recon, we can see how uh, in the de novo assembly, the right and left ends of the reference genome are uh, missing. Also, uh, monkeypox genome has shortened and repeat that we were trying to uh, discover if this approach was able to obtain the exact number of shortened and repeats in our samples. We found that in the de novo assembly approach, when the short and then repeats were inside different contexts, the uh, abacus introduces ends in between the contexts, so we couldn't uh, reconstruct the uh, real uh, short and then repeat uh, scaffold. In the mapping approach, we saw that we had enough coverage to cover the reference short and then repeats, but that we are limited to the number of uh, STRs present in the reference. So, in order to discover the real number of uh, repeats present in our monkeypox samples, we are trying to sequence uh, the best cover sample with uh, MySeq uh, 2 for 300. Also, that is going to be analyzed uh, with the latest version of, of viral recon and with uh, Oxford Nanopore technologies. And we, are, we keep working on that, so we can tell you. <laughs> anything yet um, well this is everything thank you very much for your attention thank you to all the people that uh, developed via recon with us and to the reference laboratories in the institute and the genomic unit for all this work thank you thank you very much um, so now we have time for some questions um, for anyone No, so uh, if there are no questions, um, I also uh, want to mention that you can always ask questions later on on the uh, Slack Bite Size channel. And uh, this video will be uploaded to YouTube later. Um, thank you very much again. And I also would like to thank the uh, Jan Zuckerberg Initiative uh, for funding these uh, talks.